Hello, 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 and welcome back to some more Room Factory 2 Water and Can Only. It's 9.30 in the morning, at least in game, and I am already exhausted. Why am I so exhausted? That's a good question. And I wish I had an answer for it. But, you, but the truth of the matter is that there's never really an answer for anything. Things just are, without any way, shape, or form for why they are the way they are. You know? No. That sounds good. Well, I don't. You're gonna need to explain it in more detail. Ah. No. <laughs> well, then I guess we're on an impasse. Oh, I thought we were on a Discord. Same difference. So, <laughs> I had my pony session today. That went well enough. Uh, they seem to all be enjoying the game, so I really hope that they appreciate this, uh, I would say plot twist, plot thread that I've been kind of somewhat pushing, t not pushing towards, Hinting towards for the past couple of sessions now. And hopefully they don't find it completely out of left field. Also, after the session, we went and played, um, we went and did a recording. That's why I'm so late, uh, getting back here. Yeah, I was wondering why it was taking you so long. Yeah, because today was the day... Progress? The people from my pony group. Wait, so you have stuff that you record with them? And you didn't invite me? Hey, Azura, <laughs> did you want to let's play uh, My Little Pony Maritime Adventure? Oh, okay, good point. Never mind. It's a Gen 5 game. You want to play it together? I think I told you about it at some point and you were like, um, no thank you. Yeah, I figured that yeah, we'd play. I didn't think uh, that you were serious about like playing and recording it. So. Oh yeah, no, totally. Yeah. I'm just, I was just surprised by how short of a game it was and how enjoyable it was. In. Excuse me. Did my earbud? I just put my earbud in. It's already dead. Was it not charging? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I put a second earbud in because I wanted another earbud in, and it died, like, instantaneously. <laughs> tisk, tisk. I know, right? So anyway, uh, ba ba ba. So yeah. And now, of, of course, I kind of want to play Gen... Not play. Kind of want to watch uh, Gen 5. Apparently, there's a character reminiscent of Derpy. Is it Derpy? Unfortunately not. Oh, I forget. Did, did, did we declare it in a recording what I discovered the other the other day, or was that only in text conversation? I don't know. What did you discover? About, about Derpy and another character in a game that I've been playing lately. I don't remember what this conversation was. Derpy was a ripoff of Paracarry from Paper Mario. <laughs> What, they're both in the mail delivery service. They're, well, whatever. They're both involved with the mail. They both fly. They're both... Not very well, though. Yeah, well, the whole thing with Paracary is when you meet them, um, yeah, they've lost, like, about 30 letters around the world. Paracary just doesn't know what went wrong. His boss sure as heck does. I do find and it... I, will... hmm? 
Oh, I was gonna say, I do find it really funny that if the fandom hadn't latched on to Derpy Hooves, uh, she was originally going to just be called uh, Ditsy Doo. <laughs> Yeah, they had I plans to make a ditzy character named Ditsy, and you can see that in the uh, winter wrap-up. Mm -hmm. But, uh, the Pear Carrie's Derpy. Yeah, Pear Carrie's Derpy. Uh, Does Pear uh, Carrie have a favorite food? Oh, right. So, funny thing happened in the my randomizer seed that I did today. Uh, because one of the things in Paper Mario, one of one of the events that happens is stuff around town gets stolen by Shy Guys, and you're supposed to find them in the Shy Guys base and return them to people. And you get, like, a reward for doing so. One of yeah. them is the mailbag for the post office. All of the letters get stolen. Well, the, the ones that Paracarry hadn't already lost. Uh, which in a way makes the letters that Paracarry dropped, uh, more secure <laughs> but um yeah i found the mailbag returned it to the post office take a guess as to what they gave me as the reward a letter carry carry <laughs> that's right they're the way that they thanked me for uh finding their mail is assigning their um least useful employee to me to find all the mail that they had lost well, you found that. Well, you found the mail, so I guess we don't need this guy anymore. You just watched a guy get fired and just took pity on him. Basically. Why am so I... It was the funniest thing. Success rate zero. Except it was succeeded. Yeah, see, it says success rate zero because I don't have a recipe set. So if oh. I... But if I were to actually set round off as the recipe, it would show 100%. Oh, okay. Why not just set that as the recipe? Because, as far as I'm aware, setting it as the recipe, all it does is tell you what it needs. It doesn't, like... Oh, doesn't even like autofill. Oh, yeah, no. That, that's annoying. Rune Factory 4 does autofill, which is very convenient. Because in Rune Factory 4, you go in to make something, and first there's the list of all the stuff that you have, like, the recipes for, and then you can hit a button to just freeform it if you wish. So you can just hit the button for the recipe, it'll fill it in automatically, and then you can, like, adjust it from there if you want to. I believe you can also make more uh, more than one of a recipe at a time, which is a great way yeah. to start grinding, because you need to make hundreds. Yeah, it really would be great, you know, if, you know, if the success rate is going to be 100%, to just have the option to make as many as I have the materials for you know, without making me pass out. It's obvious why that was added as a feature into, you know, later Moon versions. Factory 4. See, I keep saying these things are Moon Factory 4 because I don't know if they're in Moon Factory 3. So I still have never played Moon Factory 3. Oh, you should hurry up and get this one done so you can go and, uh, Start a blind watering can only run of Room Factory 3, I guess. Do I detect a little bit of sarcasm? No! Oh, good then. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, you do you. Like, if you want to do it as, you know, straight up, like, blind yes. and immediately into a challenge run. It's your prerogative. It's not what I would choose to do. Ooh, you're still one up. <laughs> Every game I play is a challenge run, because it's a challenge to play games. I see you finished brushing the fireplace. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. 
finished it last time, which is why I'm doing potions this time. What, like, I, what I have an important question. What is the actual value in, like, maxing out your pharmacy skill? I believe that the higher the skill... For one thing, the higher the skill, the more difficult recipes you can do. Yes. So, like, eventually I want to make Levelizer. So you need a skill of at least 63 to, I believe, guarantee it. Okay. So that, that's Seven. part one. And part two is... Again, I believe... Yeah, 100% chance to get... to succeed on Levelizer, but I'm not making that. I'm making... Healing Potion. Uh, I believe it uses up less rune points the higher your level is to do the thing. Makes sense. Now, may I ask why your main thing that you're making is the round off and not something that is a higher level? Because the round off is, as far as I've been able to tell, the highest level object that you can make with the pharmacy, uh, strictly with items that you can buy from the store. You know what? That's fair. And notably, a round off sells for more than it costs to buy the ingredients. In later Rune Factory games, you can eventually just buy all the ingredients to make the top tier of things. Except for you can't buy honey in Rune Factory 5, apparently. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Rune Factory 5. Uh, I think it's also for Levelizer again. You need honey for the recipe, and I tried for episodes to buy honey, and I could never, like, find honey for sale. Oh. And then, because Moon Factory 5 has that one guy's store that, like, every time you reload the game, he's selling a different, like, random 30 items. Yeah. So what you can do is you can save the game while the store is open, warp in there, check the stock. If he doesn't have what you want, reload, which re-randomizes it, then warp over, check the stock, and you can do that over and over again as much as you want. And I think I spent entire episodes on- like, I spent hours on that and could not find honey. <laughs> huh. I'm not sure if I truly did or not, but I have a feeling like I spent like a whole four hour episode just doing that over and over and over again, just as a way of proving this guy does not sell honey. So, my mom took me to uh, Olive Garden for lunch on Friday. Do well. And I guess they have an interesting thing that they do. Is that uh, like you you can you know buy lunch or whatever, and then also like get an entree to take home. Neat. Like, and it's made and, like, put, like, already in, like, a pre-prepared, like, take-home package. Yeah. Um, not frozen. Like, still, like, yes. actually made fresh, just put in a container that's already Yeah, set. like a doggy bag, yeah. And it's just, like... You want to take out? Oh, you go in, get your lunch, because I got, like, I go with, like, the... What really is, like, the cheapest lunch option, which is the unlimited soup salad breadsticks. <laughs> they just because fill that bag with soup, salad, and breadsticks? No. No, no, no. You see, the entree that you get is, is from a specific list of entrees that you can take to get, like, get to take home. Mm-hmm. 
the soup salad breadsticks at the lunch price, so which is cheaper than like the normal dinner price for it, is like I think thirteen or fourteen dollars. The price for the entree to take home is eight bucks. So you can almost get two of that for the same price. Is it like half the size or something? The thing is, like, like after you know, cook you know, like heating it up in the microwave and putting it on the plate, it's a full damn plate of pasta. <laughs> now, admittedly, there's only like three options and like of like the entrees that you can do this with, but it's just like Jesus, like it's it's a damn good deal. And it's just like <laughs> like just by going in for lunch. You know, and I, I basically, you know, I get two good meals out of it, plus a little bit of leftover of, of the extra salad leftover from the actual lunch itself. Yeah. Uh, because, quite frankly, of course they're going to let you take whatever leftover salad you have already sitting on your table home. Yeah, this uh, because, is a buffet. Because, well, because if you don't take it home, they're going to have to just throw it out because it's already been served to you. Yeah, that's uh, Western Eden. And, uh, I mean, and, and especially if you, you know, if they've also like already grated some cheese onto it and you've already had some of it. So, why are you trying to water the table? Are you trying uh, to wash I hit, it? I hit the wrong button. Claire. Anyways, um, wow. You didn't even have the energy to make a healing potion. So I'm drinking a big potion. Why is it a mystery potion? That's just what it is. Okay, let me ask. Is it called a mystery potion because the effect of what it does can be random from a set of effects? Nope. It's just called a mystery potion for no real reason. Yep. Weird. Because there's like different tiers of healing potion, right? Because there's like recovery potion that heals like a hundred, healing potion which heals like three hundred, mystery potion which heals like six hundred. And I don't think this game has an extra tier of healing potion, but levelizer heals you for one hundred percent. Okay, so there is what? There is recovery potion, healing potion, and mystery potion. Yes. Yeah, that's not the uh, progression I would expect for my, uh, you know, potion names. This is why in a lot, most RPGs, they, they're just simplified names, like potion, high potion, full potion, stuff like that. Or potion, super potion, etc. Yeah, well, we can't all be slimes, is there? Why not? Because uh, some of us are actually dangerous. Slurp. You're dangerous without being a slime. <laughs> yeah, see that closer where I can water you. You're, 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 um, you're suggesting that you hydrate me? That just makes me stronger. Come a bit closer so I can hit you with my water in can. That just makes me stronger, Claire. It's... Unless you mean like you'd literally swing your watering can and smack me with it. In which case, uh, no, please don't do that. So I think what I already told you about the stupid discourse that was happening online like about a week or so ago. Uh, which I'm sure you did. What specific one? Because there always uh, seems to be a new one. People saying that being able to order food from grocery stores, like Uber Eats, is necessary for disabled people because there is a non-insignificant amount of people who both cannot uh, go to, say, restaurants or grocery stores on a regular basis to get food every day, 
but who also cannot eat uh, food that has been frozen without getting sick and or dying. The last bit of that, I'm a little skeptical of. I suppose I wouldn't exactly be surprised if it's true, but I'm at least skeptical of it. So, in s so these people who cannot eat food that has been frozen without getting sick and or dying, uh, order restaurant food to be delivered to them on a three times a day basis. And they see nothing wrong with that. I mean, it... It depends on what restaurant. Yeah, because for those of y'all not in the know, uh, most restaurants freeze at least some of their food. Yeah. And then serve it to customers. It's a very, very, very common thing for restaurants to do. <laughs> yes. Like, imagine... Because I know for a fact that, like, McDonald's has a big old freezer. <laughs> yeah! And they definitely freeze their hamburger patties. And their pancakes. And their muffins. I know, because it's Don't often my it. job to count the muffins. Don't forget, literally everything that goes into a deep fryer uh, is put into a deep fryer from a frozen state. Yep, the fries, the fish patties, the chicken patties, all of that stuff. The nuggets, the uh, hash browns. Oh, yeah. I've worked at McDonald's for like a month. I learned a whole bunch of stuff about it. Which is why if I ever am in a situation where I eat McDonald's, which, by the way, I don't like to eat McDonald's very much uh, anyway, also, there's supposed to be a boycott of McDonald's going on because they support uh, genocide. I don't know all the details about that, just from the smatterings that I've heard, but whatever, I don't try to support them anyway. Uh, but if you really want to be annoying towards the employees, for whatever reason, uh, order, was it grilled chicken? Well, why? Because out of all of the items on the menu, grilled chicken is the most flippin' annoying thing to make. I think pancakes are second. Because normally, for say like a fried chicken thing, like say if you wanted chicken nuggets, it's just open the bag, put them in the tray, into the deep fryer, <laughs> set a timer, take them out, you know, dump them in the box, serve them. Very easy. For the grilled chicken, uh, you have to clear off a spot on the grill where you cook. Okay, no, no, no. For the regular patties, it's take the patties out of the freezer, stack them, you know, put them in a grid, depending on what kind of patty they are, put down the lid, Wait until the lid pulls itself off, because it sets an auto timer based off the size of the patties. Flip them, put the lid back down, wait for the lid to lift itself back up, put the patties in the tray, uh, wipe off the grill. I mean, that sounds like a lot, now that I'm saying it right now, but that's really not much to do a hundred times a day. For the chicken, I mean, clean I mean, off the grill. <laughs> What's that? Here's... Here's the thing to keep in mind, though, of, like, any part of this process, is that literally none of the food that you, uh, you know, get at McDonald's is cooked to order. Uh, Every that is food. actually not true. Sometimes it is. Most of the time, it's not. I mean, I've, I've worked at McDonald's. I, I do know that when it comes to anything that goes into a burger, or sandwich, as they say, for some reason. Uh, yeah, that's all pre-cooked and kept in, like, little heating shelves. Yes, that is true that they do keep them in, like, mine had them, like, little drawers, but, like, so you could, like, just yeah. open up the drawer, take the patty out, put it on. 
However, if it's during downtime, like my restaurant was open 24 hours, so if someone came by at 2 a.m. and we were out of that type of, like, patty, we would cook it to order. Sure. Uh, which... Otherwise, but, yeah, it's just kept in the heating tray. Quite, quite frankly, most of the time, um, yeah, they're supposed to be all those sorts of, oh, we're only supposed to keep it in the thing for however long. Yeah. yeah I don't mind like, that like, occasionally we would just flat out be out, because we had like two in there, two people wanted the burgers, we had zero, and then someone else comes in wanting one. <laughs> Like, so we have to cook it to order, the person has to wait, like, five minutes. But it was fresh. But, the grilled chicken, however, you clean off uh, one section of the grill, you put the chicken down, put a lid thing over top of it, put a little bit of water in the lid thing over top of it so it can, like, steam properly, manually set a timer on the grill. When that uh, runs out, you pick off... You pick up, like, the lid thing, and, like, the lid, and there's, like, a walls thing under the lid that's, like, two, so it's two separate units. Pick them both up. Flip the chicken, and that always stuck to the grill. Put the walls thing down, put the lid thing down, put some water in it, set a different timer manually. When that goes off, you take out the lid thing, put that away, take off the walls thing, put that away, take the chicken, put that in the tray, clean off the grill again. <laughs> It was like, whenever I was working the grill, I just keep hoping that nobody would want the grilled chicken because it was so annoying to make. Yeah, I pretty much only ever uh, worked in the drive-thru and like the front counter. Oh, they never I... let me work the drive-thru or the front counter. I, I refused to be trained like in the kitchen, basically. They trained me on, like, dishwashing, like, day two. And then when I walked in on day three, there were, like, eight people in the kitchen. And nobody washing dishes. So I started washing dishes, and a manager pulled me out, put me in the kitchen, pulled someone else out of the kitchen, and had them wash dishes instead. Because they wanted me in the kitchen for some particular reason. I was also apparently the only non-manager stupid enough to, uh, I wouldn't say volunteer, but to accept the offer of getting paid slightly more and in exchange they can have me work whatever hours they want me to. So I always got the graveyard shift. Oh. After I think my first week, I was like only graveyard shift. <laughs> I think something like 10 p.m. to 6 in the morning, something like that. With my other job having me start at 8 in the morning. Fun. Also, Wait. working at McDonald's triggered my asthma something severe. So I just basically have 8 hour asthma attacks. And the only way to cure it would either be to go outside or to go into the freezer. So I just so happened to uh, offer to be the one to do the parking lot cleanup every single night, and also to be the one to keep going into the freezer to, like, count the supplies. Also always the one to uh, clean the uh, playground area and clean all the bathrooms. No asthma attacks, uh, Around there. It is constantly being like, okay, can I do any sort of work that is far away from the grills? Thanks. It's like I said, they didn't want me to work drive through a cash register. I found out over my few years of working, I do very well at a cash register. <laughs> I worked at uh, Tim Hortons for, I want to say, like, two months, working at the cash register, and also, you know, making brewing coffee. I was 
awesome at that. Like, the managers, you know, brought us up and told us that, like, between the time of when we first put an input in on the till to the customer has their drink, it should be, like, I think they said less than three minutes. Mm -hmm. I would get, like, I'd get it down to, like, a minute if it was just one customer wanting one coffee. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Just me working the tail, by the time they finish paying with their credit card, I have their coffee in hand to give to them. Like, I was awesome at that. But of course, they never let me work drive through, so most of the time, I was just standing there at the tail. We'd have zero customers inside, even though the drive through is around the building. And the managers just be like, oh yeah, keep busy. And it's like, okay, but manager, I don't know what you mean by that. What exactly do you want me to do? Oh, keep busy. And over the years, I've asked people what they thought that the managers meant by telling me to keep busy. I've gotten a few different answers. Uh, all of which are things that I had tried to do to keep busy. And none of them were actually what the manager wanted. So I still don't know what the manager expected from me by saying, oh, just keep busy. But it wasn't uh, cleaning. No, yeah, that's basically the only suggestion that people ever offered was I was supposed to start cleaning. Made sure the coffee was 20 minutes fresh. Uh, clean up my workstation. I wasn't allowed to, like, leave to clean up other areas. I had to stay at my workstation. So I'm like, alright, I'm here. I've cleaned. You know, refilled the sugar. The milk is good. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Just working the cash register, I'm good at that. It's like those video games I play sometimes. What? Well, I've played video games uh, before. Hey, is that why you like played up so much? Because you have so much kitchen experience? I don't know. I literally remember working a job at a cash register and thinking, Oh yeah, this is just like those video games. Like, this is easy. People say it's like, oh my gosh, you're working like so hard, you're like you're doing so much. I'm like, this is easy mode. <laughs> like, you know, scan a customer's items, uh, tell them what they owe, take payment, make change, make sure that they have all of their stuff, wish them a good day. That's like, what do you mean I'm not being held on, like, a 15-second uh, time trial to make sure I get everything done? This is so insanely easy. If it weren't for the fact that jobs keep trying to say, Okay, cool, you've beat level 1. Now go and do <laughs> a level 2 on expert mode. I might actually have been able to keep a job. But for some reason, every single workplace is like, oh, you can do that? Cool. Okay, now do these six other jobs at the same time. It's like, it's like they've never heard of either a difficulty curve or of someone just wanting to stay at a preset difficulty level. It's like, can I please just stay on easy mode? Maybe put, push me up to like normal difficulty. I don't need to play you know, expert, and also three other games at the same time. <laughs> I d I'm not sure this is really at all relevant, but it just makes me think of those games, because there, there's a few games where, um, yeah, you don't even get to start with the easiest difficulty. You have to unlock it by sucking. 
not gonna make a joke. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. By being terrible at the game. Is that better? You mean like my life? So are you saying that as a result of you being terrible at your life, uh, opportunities have come to decrease the difficulty of it? Yeah, it's called getting my autism diagnosis. Okay, and that's made things easier? Well, I don't have to keep a job now. Because I'm on age. Hmm. I was so bad at life that they lowered the difficulty for me. Until occasionally they decide to crank it uh, back up again for no good reason. Yeah. I should check. I was level 67. Maybe get that up a bit more. No big deal. So anyway, uh, recording videos, that's been going fine. I think I still need, including this, I need to record like eight more videos before I leave. <laughs> I think was the number. That sounds like, okay, maybe not fun. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I mean, it's gaming. So by default, it's Yay, both gaming. fun and also easy. Everything is probably fine. Everything is probably fine. I say as I collapse. So anyway, I got some, uh, I got the new stuff I ordered for the VR in today. I haven't gotten a chance to use it though. But I got no. the stuff. You got the stuff? Yeah, so like, the way that the VR headset works, uh, to track the controllers, because the controllers aren't connected to the headset, but yet the headset still tracks them in 3D space to figure out, like, where your hands are. And the way it does that is by using infrared lights. So one of the reasons why you shouldn't use the VR outside during the day is because the sun emits so much infrared, it essentially, like, flashbangs the VR. The other reason why you shouldn't use it outside is because sunlight can warp the lenses. Oof. And yeah, apparently damage them. But even if you protected the lenses, you still shouldn't be using it outside in the sunlight because it will be overloaded by infrared. However, supposedly, from what I was able to research, you can use it outside at night as long as you have proper like lighting for it. And I think that the issue I was having last night when we were doing VR chat, you might have noticed one of my controllers wasn't working until I reset the thing. I yeah. think that, like, my living room lights might not give off enough infrared. Oh. That could be an issue. Most of the time it works just fine, but sometimes it's just like, no, not good enough. 
Uh, and also, since I'm going to be going to, like, yeah, next week, next week? Yeah, Sunday. Next week I'll be at uh, the property with the family without access to the internet, so I can't, you know, upload anything. I just have to remark on when you say the property, that sounds incredibly ominous. Yeah, good. It should sound ominous. No basement there, legally speaking. <laughs> okay, um, again, how did you find a way to say that to make it sound even more ominous? <laughs> legally speaking, there is, there are like two garages though. Wait. Um. And okay, I should. I should be able to play the VR in one of the garages. But I don't necessarily want to, you know, have them leave their lights on in the garage for the whole time I'm playing the VR. Or heck, they do have a nice outside area. Maybe I'll just want to play at night, but I also, you know, don't want to leave on lights and, like, have everybody have to deal with having lights on outside. So, I got a little... Let's say contraption, a little addition to my headset. A little tiny device that emits infrared light, which should be invisible to the naked eye, but the headset is supposed to be able to pick it up and track it just fine. So if I use that on the headset, I shouldn't need any light to play. Now, one thing about using VR, um, you can kind of see out the bottom of it a little bit. So you can kind of see, like, directly below and in front of yourself. And I often use that for trying to figure out, like, you know, where I am in my space. It's like, okay, I know, it's like, I can see, like, where my back is. It's like, okay, I can see, like, I have my trash can here. I know if I turn to the right, that's why I have my water bottle. <laughs> kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh no, I stepped on something and it feels like my cat. Oh no, that's just a piece of clothing I had sitting on the floor. Called Cinnamon. <laughs> yeah, really weird brand name. I, I don't get it. Um, I don't understand brands these days. But anyway, if I'm playing in the dark, I won't be able to see what's underfoot. Yeah. Exactly. And I have had cases where I've been just standing around and doing stuff in VR, and I've been able to feel just cinnamon rubbing past my legs. I'm like... You're lucky I don't have to start walking, cat. Oh, also, my voice, like, totally passed yesterday, so I'm still kind of happy about that. Yay! Uh, after I left you with your, uh... After I left you and the group playing with crayons, I went to just some random public server. Just kind of wandered around. There's like a bar there, so I was like, you know, picking up bottles and stuff. I was having fun because I found. <laughs> I was using the Nora avatar and I found a bottle of, like, maple syrup. <laughs> so, so, you know, going around pretending to drink maple syrup, as one does. There's someone there whose avatar was a waffle, so I just kind of walked up behind him and just. The guy got mad, but it's like, he couldn't. But the other guy around, that's like, anyway, whatever. As I was going around, just exploring, a couple of guys came up, and they thought I was just some kid, because I was, you know, messing around with objects and stuff. And for some reason, they, it's like, asked, the, it's like, hey, you're 14, right? It's like, what? No, I'm 16. Blah, blah, blah. You don't know my age. Blah, blah. It's like, Hey, ass, you know, that stranger over there. It's like, hey, strange. It's like, what's your age? Uh, no, 
Hey, stranger, like, how old are you? I just say, older than you are, clearly. And I walk away, and I can hear, <laughs> I can hear the one guy say to the other, yo, she's a grown woman. She owned you. Nice. So it's like, not only did my voice apparently pass, but I also owned somebody. <laughs> it's like, where I'm from, an answer wow. like that would just be scoffed off, like, oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> wow. I, I didn't think you were responsible enough to own property. Uh, we're just uh, older than you, apparently. Because <laughs> it's like the internet, I don't... <laughs> so I don't feel right giving out my age on the internet. Also because it still sometimes takes me a minute to, uh... It takes me a few well, seconds to realize how old I actually am. I'm getting old, you know so I'm forgetting the year. Yeah, you know what? I I feel that. Yeah, I do want to do, wind up doing more VR, because VR is supposed to be, you know, healthy. I mean, you're moving around and stuff. Especially if it's something like Beat Saber. Which, oh my gosh, that can burn a lot. True. One little song was able to burn, I think it was like 30 calories. And I forgot to check how long it was, but I think it was less than three minutes, so ten calories a minute. I think I did the math, and it's like, okay, if I play this song about 22,000 times, I'll be in shape. Yeah, good, good I don't remember the that. exact number, but it's like, yeah. It's like, I played it like twice back to back, and I was like, no. <laughs> Like, that song is demanding. I'll play other songs. It was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was You're Gonna Go Far, Kid. But it wasn't, like, just the bass song. It was, like, some rendition of the song to make it extra edgy. Oh. It's the type of song where if you play it in Beat Saber, you can't just play it. You have to have a strategy for playing it. You laugh, but yes. Be right back. I need to use the washroom. Okay, I hope you have a strategy. I do. Exactly what I was saying. Yeah, my strategy is to don't uh, sit on the toilet before starting. You know, if I do this... It's kind of incredible to think that Order of the Stick is already on 1,300 pages. Like, I wish I knew how many pages it was at when I first started reading it. But I'm pretty sure it was, like, less than 400. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, the first page it was that I had to actually wait to read. But I'm pretty sure it was around when that big city started getting overrun with goblins. I think... I remember having to wait for pages back then. And now it's like, we might get like one new page a month, and we are grateful for it.
Meanwhile, uh, Friendship is a Dragons is at almost 2,000 pages, and that one has had a consistent upload schedule for, I don't know, reason, like, 11 years or something? Like, if I go to... I have to actually type it out on the computer, because I read web comics on my phone, usually. You have like one tab for Order of the Stick, one tab for Friendship is Dragons, one tab for Cyanide and Happiness. <laughs> I just never, like those are like my first three tabs on my phone. <laughs> and I just never close those. <laughs> like when I got my phone, I opened that up. Yeah, 1,987 pages. And the first one was... 2011. So almost 13 years, and I don't think it will make it to the full 13. Would be awesome if it did, but... Almost 13 years of Friendship is Dragons, and it's... Kind of really sad it's coming to a close. But I mean, person writing it... <laughs> what can I say? They're not the same person as they were 13 years ago. And also, considering the show itself ended, like, what, three, four, five years ago? Something like that? It's incredibly impressive that they were able to continue pulling out content for this long. I solved the issue. <sighs> How's OBS even looking anyway? So it should be just about over. But yeah, I wanted to record it some My Little Pony Maritime Bay Adventure. Finally. Realize that it's actually a rather short game. I think it could have been an interesting, just regular thing to do. Have the ponies on paper session. And then just, hey, anyone who wants to do stuff, let's record some ponies. And, I mean, what can I say? The scoop of people who came together because they wanted to play a tabletop role-playing game about ponies sure do enjoy their ponies. All the people who are stuck around for the post-game game. Uh, <laughs> they all seen Gen 5 in at least some form. And me, the person running it, the tabletop ponies role-playing game, uh, had not <laughs> seen at least some of Gen 5. Morning. Morning. I was pushed inside again. Time for lunch. Hungry, hungry hippos. Honestly, I don't think that anything will give me the same sense of wonder and amusement like ponies did. But frankly, I don't think anything needs to. Like, I did two episodes of uh, Witch Spring R earlier today. 
because hey, I needed to record some. And it's like, yeah, this is, you know, fine. This is enjoyable. This has stuff that I like to have in games. I played one episode of Ponies and... I mean, it's like a two and a half hour episode almost. Well, over two hour long episode. I'm just there like... I could try to call it as an ending. I don't want to call it as an ending. I want to keep going. I want to... It's like, yeah, I see that we're at the hour mark. I'm just not going to say anything. I want to keep going. It's like, okay, I see that we've beaten the game, but there's still, like, something else I could go for. And, like, there's even, like, mini games for the game. And you can play mini games with different characters, and the different characters have apparently different stats, so I could totally just play the mini games. Apparently, the next game is going to have um, multiplayer, like co op. So that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> what do I still have left to record? That's a good question. So I have this episode of Boon Factory 2, the next two episodes of Boon Factory 2, I still have another episode of Tevi to record. Uh, one more episode of Witch Spring R. I was going to do it earlier, but I only had time for two, not three episodes. Uh, two more episodes of Duncan Rampa. That will be annoying to do. I might replace next week's Duncan Rampa episode with some miscellaneous thing instead of actually recording two episodes, because I don't really want to keep doing episodes of Duncan Rampa. And one single episode of some new game. Which, I mean, I have a lot of old single episode of a new games just kind of sitting in my backlog. So I'll probably just upload one of those instead. Oh, other news. A uh, group roleplay thing that I somehow got talked into joining, which... No, I somehow got talked into trying to run it until the person who had originally invited people for the thing decided that uh, they were going to run it all instead. I'm all like, okay, yes, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to run another group roleplay thing, thanks. I'm already running a ponies game. I have no idea what I'm doing with it, but it's fine because the players are awesome and can make up half a session of nonsense on their own like one of the characters being woken up too early and deciding we're going to go to, we're going to go and get some coffee and that made up about honestly almost an hour of our time and i'm like yes thank you <laughs> you've heard of no nonsense dming this is a please continue your nonsense dming as the dm i will bite in every once in a while to answer your questions, but otherwise, please continue with your antics. I find them humorous. <laughs> As a DM, might I say, please carry on with what you are doing. So the last episode of Boon Factory that I'm going to record before leaving on this trip, I'm literally recording like the morning before I go for the trip. Also, got some paperwork in a few days ago, and tomorrow I'm going to have to be dealing with all of that, and frankly it shouldn't be too difficult, it's just annoying because I have to get like tax forms together and stuff, and plus I have to get tax forms together and stuff to get my taxes done, that's important. It's important to pay your taxes, even though I don't pay taxes, I get money back from taxes, which I think is money that I had paid into taxes.
Uh, but yeah, doing more VR to try to... I mean, frankly, VR is fun. I just wish that I had another game I really liked playing like Beat Saber, but, you know, just another game because I don't want to just do Beat Saber all the time. Because my taste in music is so arbitrary that there are only a few songs that... <laughs> My taste in music is so arbitrary that there are relatively few songs on Be available on Beat Saber that I actually want to play, and my t taste in activity is so fleeting I don't want to do the same, like, handful of songs over and over again all night long. <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing different things. Yeah, this is probably fine. Yeah, this is probably fine. <laughs> well, this has been another episode of Rune Factory. I hope that you've all enjoyed and can talk later. Or maybe not talk. I think that'd be for the best.